In this section, I want to talk about two new e-learning articles. I want to talk about children and online screen time with education and dancers virtual stage. Stay with me and let's get into it. I am glad to be able to bring you two articles today. But the first one I wanted to cover was the dancers keep the show going on the virtual stage. And as you can see, nice exotic uniform uh, outfits, costumes. Definitely not something I would see in America. It's definitely like Chinese or Asian. Virtual settings provide a new home for self-expression for the dance community uh, as it's deprived of a stage. Slump in productivity and cash flow concerns are among the most severe impacts of the global health crisis which also hit the dance community, but the show must go on. I have talked to various dance communities in different parts of Indonesia, and if I may conclude, the gist or yearn, they are the gist or the yearn to be back performing again, said the Reta, the dancer and art performing producer. As a survivor of the COVID-19, 19, 19, Identifies as case number three, Raka took the opportunity to become the ambassador of the Sarwin Online a, a crowdfunding dance perform program in which the viewers can pay for entertainment at the same time, express their concern and support for the dancers' welfare. The pandemic has taken away the stage and their ability to perform in public space. For the dance community, this dance is the fighting spirit to get through the uncertain times they have kept on dancing, she said. The Jakarta Arts Council took the initiative to create the virtual stage for the dancers with the support of the Director of General Culture. Launched, in, launched on April 29th, the Indonesian Dance Net Network stage can be viewed on YouTube, Inst Instagram with dance very created by the council. To date, 15 videos have been posted on YouTube channel comprised of dance performers in various genres as well as tutorial clips. According to Yula Yufert, the chair of the dance committee in Jakarta Arts Council, um, the creation process is am amicable to encourage all performers to submit their videos. Please don't give up on dancing and change your profession to make ends meet. With this pandemic is over, we don't want to see a situation with no dancers left, said Yolo, and, and the launch of the talk show to a live YouTube. The all performers heed the physical distance requirements in which some have taken the comfort of performing their living rooms as dance studios. Bossy's dance choreographic, Donkey, for instance, is performing his solo number, The Wandering Sun, on the beach with the sun as the backdrop for him to appear at a silhouette. The virtual stage is integrated with Savannah Online. Each of the posts contains a link to the description of the box and directs to a payment system run by the financial technology company OVO what supports them in virtual wallet. All right, so kind of like how you can give a donation to like a super chat on YouTube or somebody, or Patreon, somebody you like. The proceeds for the show will go to the performers and the COVID-19 relief funds. Some of the donations are given to the informal sector workers whose livelihoods are affected by the movement restrictions under the existing program, Pardon. Undertake the, for the THR, the clipping to pay the initial fifthly holiday bonus initiated by OVO. The broadcast and the digital promotion team of the Indonesian Dance Network and Savannah Online are managed by the Isko Kawabanga Indonesian Foundation and the organization runs a professional company. So I'm going to stop there. But what do you think? Um, would you watch would you watch professional dancers online? Would you even pay to, to um, watch their full shows? Or do you have to be there to see the experience live? Let me know. 
And then, um, have you ever tried something like this? What's your favorite kind of dancing? Please like, comment, and leave your and subscribe below. You know, in our second article of the day, this one was a little more interesting. Increased internet use by children concerned parents. You know, like the past few years, people said you have eye problems if you use your smartphone a lot, and so you should limit your smartphone usage. Or when I was a kid, they would say, stop looking at the TV so long, that will ruin your eyes. And now you have these little kids doing online classes beyond what they uh, would normally use, whether it's the PC or their smartphone at home. So it's not really the education use as much as adding in all of the information together about screen time throughout the day. So let's get into this. E-learners have become a popular model for education amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And it is expected to become the new trend in the era of the fourth industrial revolution. But experts say for it to be succeed, uh, children need to be equipped with essential skills and knowledge of the use of the internet effectively and safely. Yeah, we had an article yesterday about um, online college students and their professor had like a porn open on his screen while he was giving a lecture. UNICEF has recently warned that millions of children across the globe are not incre are at increased risk of harm as their lives move more and more online during lockdown. Yeah, they're more they're becoming more and more isolated, right? And less group focus, less teamwork, and that's really not the Asian way anyway. More than 1.5 billion children and young people have been affected by the school closures worldwide. Many of these students are now taking classes as well as socializing more online. Spending more time in the virtual platforms can, can leave children vulnerable to online X-rated content and grooming as predators look to exploit the Convoy 19 and other things. You know, I don't know about that. I actually kind of worry about it a different way. What if they don't get the social skills to actually just interact, to do teamwork, or not always put themselves first? Because guess what? I can just always block you. I can always move rooms. I can just ignore you online. And what you hear today, but you're gone tomorrow. Versus that classmate that's with, that's there all year long, or for many years long in some cases. A lack of face-to-face -face contact with friends and partners may lead to heightened risk taking such as sending x-rated messages while increasing unstructured time online may expose children to potentially harmful and violent content as well as greater risk for bullying on cyberbullying according to the statistics of the world health organization well they're not really that um high on my authority list and global partnerships to end violence an estimated 750 million predators go online at any given moment so I think I'm going to stop it there because it's mostly talking about internet safety. So my question is, what would you recommend for somebody, like two, one, two, or three ways? How can they be safe online? What should they look out for? And when maybe which way were you naive and you were taken advantage of, but you learned from your mistake? Like, you know, in my case, gosh, back in the day, there are two things. One, we always had those emails like, hey, you know, you, you just won like 10 million euros. We just want you to pay tax. You know, I never took advantage of that, but I was like, what? Really? Why? Why me? I, but one thing that um, one of some of my friends did, they would send money orders to complete strangers. And a money order, once it's claimed by somebody, you can never get the money back. So that was, that was actually when eBay just started up so before PayPal and everything. So some people did get scammed, but I know that way. So which way can people be safe online? Two or three ways, or which, or which way can people be scammed easily? Please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear. Hi. The small clip you saw was brought to you by Loyal World News. If you like what you saw, you should subscribe and, tune, and look up my daily Loyal World News report for its full version. If you don't want to watch it on YouTube, prefer to be on the road, I also have a podcast in, in every full-length video I put up.